All righty. Thank you. Um, I was going to read these poems in November, and then I got sick, um, and I had, ch I had pulled poems about people and creatures th for whom I was thankful, and I figured end of the year is also a nice time to look at your blessings. So this first one is called Maggie. She is a bristly-faced, onyx-eyed, pointy-eared terrier, as sturdy as the heather of her highland roots. She's a 15-pound package of licks and snuffles, tugs and tussles, wags and yaps. She is a fierce but fruitless pursuer of squirrels, a hopeful, hungry shadow at meal prep, a snoring lump on the end of the couch. And since the day we adopted each other, she has owned my heart. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm one of seven children, and six of us are still pretty tight. And we, uh, we have text threads, multiple text threads, through the week. And one of them inspired this poem. Called, and this all came from my siblings' text, called Sibling Wordplay. The subject was succulents, specifically the clever use of such plants to make prom corsages. Succulent, the youngest sister text, that and jambalaya, so fun to say. <laughs> another sibling favors shenanigans. Still another, guji an invention of his toddler son describing cereal gone badly soggy. <laughs> a third sister submits, ta-da, a frequent interjection of hers. The poet sister agon agonizes. So many delicious mouthfuls of words, juicy words, voluptuous, escapade, fresh, crunchy words, chinchilla, Staccato, crackle, words that sizzle and pop, spicy, kickstart, pizzazz, words that melt sweet and soft on the tongue, whisper, ocean, trust. Finally, the poet offers knucklehead, because, you know, it's fun to say. That's all there is. <laughs> Thank you. And grandchildren. Oh, there's nothing better. This one is called Ama. I have a new name. My two-year-old grandchild's version of Grandma. Ama, she calls me. Ama, isn't that lovely? Ama, like a sigh of contentment. Ama. A cozy, overstuffed chair of a name, warm and familiar as flannel, soft as pudding. Ama, a name that hums and whispers and soothes. Thank you, little one, for making me your Ama. Um. <laughs> Thank you. And Hannah, there's hope. Even when you've lost a relationship, even when you lose the love of your life for 40, over 40 years, you find new relationships. And I am very grateful for one that I have found. And this poem is called The Turning. Two people walk on either side of a road, both of them scarred and weathered by loss, both of them moving forward, not with a particular destination in mind, but because they can, because they don't know what else to do. Gradually, they drift toward the road's center. One arm brushes another, an apology is muttered, shy smiles exchanged. A conversation begins. They talk of music, food, and travels, of work, children, and grandchildren. They speak of their absent beloveds, and of two years navigating the deep alone. This middle ground is a tender space, this new friendship warm with possibilities. 
At first, they are cautious with each other, careful not to ask too much or make assumptions. But the scars of loss soon remind them that life is a transitory, precarious gift, sweetest when shared. They don't know what to do with that yet. But bowing to uncertainty, they turn and open themselves to each other. Thank you.